everybody, and welcome back to Simi and Jimmy's Treehouse Podcast. I am Simi and Jimmy, joined today by YouTuber extraordinaire, and there's a bunch of other feats I want to get into, the one and only Mr. Beat. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, this has been a long time coming. Mr. Beat and I have been in each other's DMs for, I don't know, a couple of years now. And I, maybe I've just been too uh, anxious to finally meet you face to face over Discord so we can chat it up. But, you know, we finally did it, took the plunge, and here we are, Mr. Beat. This is the first time we've actually talked. That's weird. It seems like we've already done this before. Mm -hmm. since, you know, it's been so long, but yeah, it's great to meet you this way. <laughs> so so peop if people don't know who you are, I'm just going to list off a handful of your accomplishments. Uh, you're a musician. Uh, you used to be a teacher. I think you have retired from teaching now, right? <laughs> yeah, I just teach online now. Okay, so teacher, uh, famous YouTuber. That's a pretty big one. Uh, you make music, like I said. It, you do uh, zany time comedy skits with your brother. You know, I've done the Mr. Beat or Mr. Beat uh, deep dive. I know all the. <laughs> you know all the channels. Uh, I've wow. even used uh, some of your music in my videos. Uh, I really like your the pet store music, or I guess yes. you, you, did you make that beat? I imagine. Oh yeah, it's yeah. that's for the, the actually that's a kids album that mm -hmm. I made. Oh, uh, that's one of my favorite songs is off your kids album, and uh, I use that in my uh, homeless mailbag video. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, have I gotten anything wrong yet, or how does one man have enough hours in the day to do all these things? I just have a lot of interests, and I just uh, don't sleep a whole lot. Well, I used to not sleep a whole lot. Today, actually, these days, I, I get a lot of sleep, and uh, it's I feel better than ever because of it. But yeah, I don't I don't make as much music anymore as a, as I would hope to, or nor the zany time videos. Uh, honestly, those are the most fun things that I could do, but that nobody really cares about that crap. So uh, Oh, I'm there every episode. Don't you worry. <laughs> you got one fan at least. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> that means a lot. Yeah. It's a really weird sense of humor that, I mean, kind of yours is too, is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Like, no offense, but like, it's a, uh, you kind of, I, I was, uh, I remember watching one of your videos with uh, my wife. And oh, God. <laughs> Don't she, do that. She, she, like, <laughs> She was not laughing, and I was, I was yeah. laughing. Uh, but it's the same thing with my own videos, my funny, supposed quote unquote funny videos with her. She does not laugh at them. She's not a uh, fan of the squirrel character. <laughs> I don't. Uh, gee, you know, it's he likes uh, rom coms. Mm. What can I say? What can I say? I, I would imagine most uh, adult women with children would not find me funny, so I'm truly not <laughs> surprised at all. My mom refuses to watch anything I make. She won't even be watching this great podcast, uh, Tragic, but... My mom does not watch my history stuff because she doesn't care about history much. <clears throat> well, I mean, she does, but she doesn't admit it. Everybody cares about history. Anyway, don't get me started on that. Uh, but, no, she lo but my mom is one of the biggest supporters of our Zany Time stuff. Like, she... Oh. Yeah, she cracks up watching that stuff too, so I, I appreciate that. Well, Mr. Beat, I'm going to play the prank on you that I love to play on this show, and I'm going to say the next five words you say will be the title of this episode. I don't... Those count. <laughs> Eat... Asparagus, much. Okay, perfect. I just pop in my head. I would like to eat asparagus more. I was just thinking about that. I was like, why don't I buy asparagus more? You know, it's like, so, mm -hmm. it's good for you and it tastes so freaking good, but. Yeah, like sauteing it up with a whole bunch of butter so it's not yeah. even healthy anymore. Well, I mean, hey, you know, you got to do that with uh, Brussels sprouts. Otherwise, no one will eat Brussels sprouts. Mm -hmm. so I don't like, think I've ever even had one. I I've heard that they're very bitter. They're very bitter. That's why you add all the uh, uh, the seasoning and the butter and the. Just make yeah, it but surely you can tell from my uh, from my complexion <laughs> that I eat a lot of vegetables. Very healthy body over here on this side. Uh, it's just it's the sun, you know. I don't. <laughs> hey, skin cancer is is a real threat, you know. True, I'm like hiding inside. Eye. Yeah, you got to hide from that sun, you know. Speaking of, how does Mr. Beat have enough time in the day to do all these things? Uh, I'm watching your videos. You're doing some sort of uh, shaving advertisement, and bam, bam! 
your your bicep is thicker than my neck, Mr. Beat. How do you have the time to exercise like that? Uh, yeah, it's just I don't have a social life either. <laughs> so that might help. Uh, you know, like I got married pretty young. I I have a couple kids, and my idea of a like a fun Friday night is just going to a coffee shop and and then being home by ten. I even wrote a song about that. It's called "I'm Boring." <laughs> so yeah, like. You know, when you don't go out much, you do have time just to go to the gym, I guess. Uh, and it's just like, honestly, it's the only time I get where I don't have to think about anything. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's almost like, and it's, it's it relieves stress a lot for me. That's kind of why I stuck with it. Because yeah, it's hard to do all that, you know. But I think if somebody can find something that's uh, physically straining, even if it's like, I don't know, like... Uh, running laps around your house even like in getting your heart rate up you know it uh it actually helps everything else in your life so mm -hmm. gosh, i got i got kind of serious there i sound like a guru a health guru well i want us to get super duper serious on this show mr beat because if we're going to be talking <laughs> about the the deep dark depths of american history that's a pretty serious topic and i thought it would be very uh, insightful to hear from you because as uh, were you a middle school or a high school history teacher Yes, both. Both, okay. So you know what they want the kids to know, and then you probably know also what they don't want the kids to know. Is there a difference when it comes to teaching history? Who are they? Well, whoever's <laughs> writing the textbooks, like what are they leaving yeah, no, out? No, no. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, and it's uh, people don't realize this, but uh, teachers have no control over what they teach in the classroom. It's all school boards. Um, school boards decide, and then they a lot of times will uh, assign that authority to maybe curriculum teams, you know, who, but uh, yeah, teachers still kind of have, once you're in the classroom, you're like, okay, well, we have to teach this big idea, you know, we have to teach about nativism, for example, or uh, to, to teach about discrimination. And so you, you kind of have a little bit of freedom to like, okay, I want to focus more on this event versus this event. Um, so yeah, I guess you could say that teachers have a little bit of flexibility. But regardless, like, there's not one teacher I knew that, um, except, okay, there's maybe one, but he was a fossil, he, uh, he's about <laughs> to retire, who actually just like used the textbook every day. Most teachers, history teachers especially, don't use textbooks that often. Um, it's mostly about the students like kind of exploring things on their own and usually there's resources online that they will check out and, the, and they'll bring back the information and talk about it one of the, the most common things you'll find in a class i don't know like when you graduated from high school assuming you did i don't want 2013 <laughs> okay yeah i mean it's changed i don't know you probably it was probably like this when you were in high school too but most social studies teachers these days are all about discussion and um, kind of uh, collaboration in the classroom because like when you're bouncing ideas off of your classmates, um, it kind of forces them to learn it at a, at a deeper level versus them just like reading something from a book, answering questions about it, you know. And also it makes it more relevant. So something I always did was these things called Socratic circles where like <clears throat> either it'd be an inner circle and an outer circle. The outer circle, you did it. You did those. Yeah. Things. Yeah. Yeah. They're really effective actually. Like, because especially if you uh, facilitate them the right way, because you get students thinking about things they never would have thought about. Uh, otherwise you're not, you're not just spoon feeding them. The teacher's just kind of hanging out in the back of the room and, it really empowers kids too, you know, like, I just hated that when teachers were just lecture the whole freaking time. Mm -hmm. Like, did you have teachers like that? Well, I uh, was going to be an English teacher, so I've gone through all the training and I just, you know, oh, wow. my last semester I decided to not do it, which was pretty lucky because after all the COVID stuff, I was pretty thankful to not be in a teacher's position. But yeah, I've oh, gone through, you know, I'm I'm qualified to be one. I just uh, choose not to, I guess. But uh, I don't know if any school would hire me. So, you know, it might just be for the best. <laughs> They don't need to know your real name. <laughs> oh, no, I, I mean, I don't really care about all that, but still. Um, uh, in When you have a history discussion with these teenagers, have you did you ever find that some of them 
might have been a little too edgy after going on the internet because i just saw a story yesterday this uh, jewish teacher quit because an 11 year old like drew a picture of hitler on his on his uh paper or something did you ever have anything like that come up where somebody was just truly miseducated by something they read online definitely <clears throat> i uh mostly taught in conservative areas so <clears throat> like uh there's a lot of indoctrination and I even had parents like call me saying you, you shouldn't teach about Islam and I was like oh, well, the curriculum says we have to teach world religions uh, but I had like a really long conversation with an angry parent after school one day uh, actually I ended up resolving it so I was I, I felt good about it but at the same time yeah the kids you, you mentioned the edgelord part of it uh, mm -hmm. that was basically me so I mean, you know, I'm yeah, speaking from myself yeah, it's before the internet, kids were doing that crap. They were drawing mm. swastikas on bathroom stalls. There's nothing new about any of this. Uh, and they grow out of it. Overwhelmingly, they grow out of it. By the time they're 25, they're just like, what was I doing? Because mm -hmm. like, it's all about getting a reaction. And so I was not the type of teacher to react to that stuff, like get offended if, like if a kid cussed me out, I'd be like, okay. And then I'd be like, well, you want to talk outside about what's really on your mind? What's we start really going flexing on? those biceps at him. <laughs> Give him the beat down! Yeah. Right. <laughs> the Mr. Grab beat down. <laughs> Give him a noogie right there in class. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, that's illegal. But I, uh, yeah, no, I had a pretty good relationship with most of my students, actually, mostly because I was just chill. Like, And that, those are the teachers that survive in the profession, the mm. ones who just kind of, it's like, if you have a type A too much, like wants to like put out every fire type of teacher, they're not going to survive. And uh, it's the most, I'm, you probably made the right choice because it is yeah. one, of the, one of the most demanding professions around. I, I was there that last, my last year of teaching was COVID year uh, when everybody went back, you know, and I was teaching kids online at the same time I was teaching kids in the classroom and it was extremely stressful. Plus that was at the time, the time when all of the parents started showing up to the, uh, school board meetings you know and they're just like making these kids wear masks like it was the, mm. uh, the worst thing ever um and yeah no it, it was pretty crazy i'm kind of glad i got at it when i did yeah and after two years of remote learning during covid and now we're coming back and chat gpt exists is there any <laughs> hope like do you have any hope for the next generation of students to actually learn anything well yeah because they will die if they don't. I always frame it as like survival of the species and uh, including with empathy, like the ones who have least amount of empathy, the ones who are just like intolerant of anything new, like that is different. I'm angry at it. I'm scared about it. I'm not going to tolerate it. Those type of people, they end up dying. And the <laughs> ones who are like, okay, you're weird. You're different. Come on. Let's uh, work with the, the, the changes, go with the changes. They're the ones who survive, their kids survive, and they, they're the ones who keep the species going. And so historically, that like that's time and time again, it's the ones that, and there's a reason why we make progress as a society overall. I know it seems kind of bad right now, like, oh, we're taking all these, these steps backwards as a society, but like... Well, uh, once we get Trump back in the White House, we'll be good to go, right, Mr. B? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a uh, progress. <laughs> yeah, I mean the thing is, like, uh, we the, those people who right now—I I hate to, it's it's front of mind because you know you've seen how it is on Twitter this week. You can't avoid all the anti-vax stuff, mm. and like uh, th those folks, I, we don't need to really sugarcoat it. Like, they're being misinformed to a point where their lives are in danger. They're getting people killed. Maybe that's just going to be the way it is. We just, just should accept that, you know, like the ones who are actually following. Uh, I shouldn't say following the science because you don't follow the science. The science is there whether you like it or not. But like the ones who basically go with what works, because <laughs> like, like, for example, if you had a plumber come to your house and like he was just tinkering around and he never fixed anything. Uh, you would never hire them again. Mm -hmm. But then, like, if there's a doctor who's saying, here, take this, uh, it'll help you not die, and then you don't die, and all your friends that take this don't die, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with that doctor. These people are, like, actively going against people, like, that are trying to save their lives. So if you're going to actively go against people that are tr you know, trying to save your lives, then okay, 
Mm-hmm. Bye. We'll see you later. <laughs> you had a good run here on Earth, I guess. <laughs> but, now, I know that sounds uh, bad, but you know, no, it's point. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, but I'm asking, like, you know, academically, uh, how do you and your colleagues think the the future is going to be now that ChatGPT can write essays? Same thing. Same thing. If you can't, okay, if you have to rely on robots for everything, that means you have nothing to offer. And so we are going to be forced as a society to like have new skills. Um, and, and if we don't, then we're, we're not going to survive. Uh, now, is this different than every other technology before it? I think it will be. Yeah. I mean, I think I don't want to be a doomsdayer, but I think probably within 20 years, there'll be a point where, okay, the technology is good enough now where most of us don't have to work anymore. Wow. And that's, that's why I would say universal basic income is going to have to be the, the thing that kind of steps in. To hey, we were both the Yang gang, right, Mr. Beat? Oh, you like Andrew oh, Yang? Oh, okay. I, I have a Thank math you. hat and everything. Yeah, it's too bad. He, he was just, He's just not a politician. That's why he mm. couldn't last. But yeah, like his ideas were great, especially, I mean, UBI, I was like very skeptical about it when I first heard about it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I love it. I think it's kind of the the best idea that he brought to the table you i mean do you think ubi would work when, maybe we should tell people what ubi universal base it's not like a std or anything it's universal <laughs> basic income you think your viewers listeners know what that is yeah they, i mean after right. uh, we got that trump money in the mail during COVID, i think people caught on to the <laughs> idea right yeah well but see that's another thing too is like that was a one-time payment or two or three time mm-hmm. payment the big, biggest part about it is that it's reoccurring and it kind of offers that peace of mind, like saying, no matter what happens in my life, at least I have something coming in to feed me, you know, mm-hmm. like, uh, whereas I felt like the, you know, the Trump check, you know, that dang socialist, uh, <laughs> you know, he was, he was like, all right, well, here, the, you, this is just a, and so a lot of people that got that, like, well, I don't know if I'm ever going to get this again. And so they did like to spend it on whatever, you know, because, uh, you know, well, but honestly, though, I, a lot of the research shows they spent it on bills, boring bills. And that's what so, I did for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I guess, I mean, it's amazing how people are like, oh, universal basic income. See what happened during the pandemic it just caused inflation. I'm just like, well, that doesn't make any sense at all if you really logically think about it, because it's like it, people overwhelmingly this spend it on boring stuff that they need to survive so are you saying that if we buy stuff that we need to survive then that causes inflation that maybe that's a red flag about like society <laughs> <laughs> like uh-huh. uh i'm ranting a lot in this uh, no that's perfect yeah. that's this uh-huh. is exactly what this show is meant to be mr beat uh but i do want to dive into if you have any stories to tell uh what are some American history events or facts that most people don't know about? I always love talking these things through. Definitely, yeah. I there. <clears throat> so something that I always say right away is the the Philippine American War, which I made a video about recently, and uh, a lot of Filipinos actually reached out to me after that and thanked me for making it because um, it does get glossed over. In nearly every American history class now, some of the more hip teachers are, are teaching it these days, I guess. But like, it's not part of any curriculum usually. So, do you know much about the Philippine American War? I watched your video when it came out, but oh, nice! Thank yeah, you. I mean, of course, I watch all your videos, Mister Beat. Come on. Whoa, I don't even watch all my videos. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what are some things? If somebody's never heard of this, what are the bullet points? It's the the war that was like. Uh, a consequence of another more well-known war, the Spanish-American War. And so essentially, you know, Spain got their butt kicked in in the Spanish-American War, so the United States got all these possessions, (laughs) which were just so happened to be like, you know, uh, essentially countries that wanted self-rule, but they're just like, oh great, now another imperial power is gonna rule over us. And the United States, the whole idea was like, hey, we're going to fight for your freedom, But then they turn around afterward and said, actually, we kind of like you. We want to have our own (laughs) empire. (laughs) And so especially at the Philippines, like uh, they were 
instead of off granting them their independence, they just like, oh, you're just going to be part of the United States now. They didn't like that so much. Um, and so uh, the Filipinos rose up and it was actually a pretty devastating war that lasted several years. Technically, it lasted decades if you want to talk about um, some of the islands just never surrendered. Like... <laughs> Some of, like the Moors in the, in the southern Philippines, they just like, nah, we're never gonna. And so like, and then uh, today though, if you go to the Philippines, people generally are like, oh, we love the United States. Mm -hmm. Even there, they're not even taught about this war. The reason why they love the United States so much is because they're they only remember history back to World War II. Um, World War II, the United States was really beneficial to the Philippines because we saved them from Japan. We kicked the Japanese out, another imperial power. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah, I do a podcast with a guy who lives in the Philippines and he just took a trip to New York oh. City. So it's uh, pretty cool talking to him about his experience coming on to the Big Apple. Uh, wow. Were there horrible war crimes committed during the, the Filipino war? You know the answer to that, don't you? You did your homework. Yeah, yeah, there were war crimes. Um, probably shouldn't go into all of them here, but... Uh, oh, please feel free <laughs> if you want to. You just love to be demonetized. Oh, uh, this this is... People come here for the real shit, Mr. Beat. Come on. All right. Yeah, no, there were concentration camps um, that the Americans set up for the Filipino civilians population. They controlled the population because... Uh, there was guerrilla warfare. The Filipinos were engaging in guerrilla warfare, so the American soldiers was like, I don't know who's on my team or who's an ally, who's not. And so they just like, uh, let's just like have these like force it, force people into these uh, camps, which mostly were just the cities they lived in already. Uh, if they did live in a village, they're like, okay, you can't leave the village type of deal. Uh, and then, yeah, like they didn't, there's not much known about how they were treated in the camps, but the fact that they did that uh, decades before concentration camps that were <laughs> established in Nazi Germany. And then American soldiers tortured um, Filipinos pretty routinely. Um, USA! They, USA! Yeah. <laughs> like the worst things you can possibly do to... Yeah, like uh, the water cure is something I mentioned in my video where people are... You yeah, um, simulate... Uh, I mean, it's like a, we, we've heard of waterboarding. Everyone's heard of waterboarding probably from uh, Guant Guantanamo Bay. But this is even worse because they just like fill them up with water. They force them to drink water. Whoa! Literally, like blowing up like a balloon and throwing it back up. Yeah, until they. Yeah. That's that's pretty horrific. That's like cartoonishly evil at that point. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, the Filipinos, hey, they, they got them back, though. After they, they did this, um, the Filipinos started torturing the American soldiers they captured by burying them up to their heads um, in the ground and then uh, putting sugar on their heads, and then the ants would come. Oh, God! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... They got him back. <laughs> yeah, I guess the, I'm starting to think maybe all is not fair in love and war. This sounds pretty uh, horrendous. <laughs> 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 I, I do love hearing about this kind of stuff. You know, some of my favorite movies are just uh, brutal torture and gore, but maybe I guess in real life it's not as fun. <laughs> um, yeah, but, uh, it's not, a, not a Tarantino film. No, but it, it does inspire some good stuff, I guess. So a silver lining for this horrible massacre. Uh, speaking of which, how about the, uh, what, how do you pronounce it? The My Lai, Me Lai Massacre? Is that, oh, is, is uh, that a popular thing in the high schools these days? Uh, well, you know, I think most American history teachers t taught it if, the, if you even get to Vietnam, you know. I, I did uh, learn about that one in high school. Yeah, my, I think it's My Lai. My Lai. That's how I, that's how I pronounce it anyway. I always get pronunciations wrong. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, it's another example more recent of the Vietnam War where, Soldiers went in and uh, they uh, just killed a bunch of women and children. And they raped them as well um, before they killed them. Are uh, we supposed then, to be the good guys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, Well, the, I always like get even more upset at the people that, the higher ups that cover it up though. And this was a cover up. This They covered it up after the they found out. It's just like with the Catholic Church with the covering up the, uh, the abuse by priests. No, it's like, Imagine if any other organization did something like that, um, like 
I always bring up the example of NASCAR. Like if NASCAR uh, covered up the fact that there was like, you know, 20 or 30 NASCAR drivers, a couple of them kind of popular, who were like, you know, pedophiles, and they covered it up. They didn't go to the authorities. Do you think people would get upset at NASCAR? Do you think they'd stop watching NASCAR? I think they would. Well, I don't know. Did people stop watching football after Jerry Sandusky or whatever that story was? Uh, Well, I mean, wasn't he wrestling, though, you mean? I don't know. I don't know sports. (laughs) I just remember Jerry Sandusky. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I think he was a wrestling coach. Might be. Uh, Well, I certainly stopped watching wrestling after that, so. I, I don't watch wrestling. Yeah. I do watch football, though. Uh, do we have anything we want to talk about that isn't the brutal slaughter of, uh, <laughs> of people? <laughs> Are there any other historical, uh, you know, blind spots? Well, I, I'm kind of fascinated, like, when you first reached out to me, I was like, you like my stuff, really? And I, I'm always fascinated, like, what first got you into my videos? Uh, like, what was the topic, do you remember, or the type of videos? It must have just been a random YouTube recommendation. Uh, I honestly do not remember the the beginning, but I did go and binge through probably, I've seen 90% of the videos on your channel, and then I went to all the, the branching off other channels and found all the, you know, the secret <laughs> channels that have like a, a thousand views. Didn't even mention the Beat Goes On, your music documentary channel. You just oh, had a yeah. new episode yesterday. Yes, yes, that's right. R.E.M., uh, one of my favorite bands. It, it, that's actually... I really love making those videos more than I like what, making the regular American History videos. <laughs> mm-hmm. Did you ever think to put everything on the same channel, or do you think it's better to separate it out based on the type of content? I kind of went back and forth on that. Uh, maybe it was a bad idea to have a separate channel because it took me a long time to get that one off the ground. But uh, I, honestly, at the same time, though, I think I made the right choice because can i don't ever appear on camera on the other channel and i can just like there's a lot of people that once they see my icky face on screen they're like oh this guy i've come across this guy before this is the guy (laughs) this is the guy who's a free trader like he likes free trade i hate i'm not going to take him seriously again whereas like if they don't see my face they don't know quite who it is and they're just like okay i'll I'll check i'll keep watching Mm -hmm. especially when it's like you know at the beginning of the video when you're scrolling on your phone it just starts playing automatically uh, it's like, oh, they would have no idea. A lot of the people still don't know that the beat goes on as me. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Somebody yeah, might yeah. be subscribed to both and have no clue it's the same guy? Exactly. No, yeah. seriously. That's funny. Me, reached out and told me, yeah. Well, no, uh, like, so you, what did you, did you like American history when you were in school? Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. Okay. And it, it helps when you have a good teacher, too, who makes it fun. And I had a uh, lot of great teachers. Give him a shout out right now. Uh, shout Smith. out! Shout out to Mr. Fink. He was an Iowa State senator and a government teacher. What an absolute chat of a man! Yeah, yeah. Shout yeah. out to him. <laughs> but what I've always appreciated about you and uh, Mr. Fink is that you are very open about your politics. Like you have several videos just taking the political compass. You know, you don't even care if people know what you think. And I think back to like maybe fifth or sixth grade, you know, I'm as ignorant about politics as any 11 year old should be. And I find out that there's, you know, the teacher says there's Democrats and Republicans. And I, I kind of respect this teacher and I think I'll just be whatever she is. So I asked her, Hey, which one are you? And she got so offended, so angry that I would dare ask her that question. And that always stuck with me. So I appreciate that you are not ashamed of uh, your personal (laughs) beliefs and you'll just talk about them. What always helped me, though, is like if I did have students that asked me, like, what's your political party? I'd always say I'm independent. And that was the truth. I have never the only time I register for a political party is if I want to vote in <clears throat> closed primaries. And then after that, I'll go back to independent because because I've done I voted in both Republican and Democratic uh, primaries um, down here in Kansas. And uh, I've always been kind of cynical when it comes to like politics and contrarian a bit like uh mm-hmm. i you know obviously today these days i, I think the democratic party is uh <laughs> better than the republican party because i'm not a big fan of trumpism but at the same time like there's some aspects of uh 
Republican Party that have gotten better in recent years. Like their foreign policy has gotten better since George W. Bush. And I got to I got to give credit to that because that was my biggest issue with George W. Bush when I was uh, younger. So I yeah, like it's it's kind of nice to like not have allegiance to a, a tribe mm-hmm. period. And, and tribalism is going to be the end of all of us for sure. It is. It, it was the beginning of all of us. But it's, yeah, it's also the end. It's like uh I'm making a video about this by the way coming oh, up cool. about tribalism yeah i'm really excited to but yeah like it helps me teach it helps me um and yeah i i'm biased like everyone else you have to as a i think as a history teacher or social studies teacher in general you have to reveal your bias because if you don't um uh, it you you kind of lose credibility um and I'll, it's one of those things where the social sciences in general they are so much, they're like open to interpretation, you know, like they're subjective often. You could, you have the same facts basically about like, this would happen, but then you can spin them so many different ways. Mm-hmm. You can't do that as much with uh, science and that you certainly can't do it with math. <laughs> no. you know, math. Math is math. You can't spin it another way. Like, ah, two plus two is actually, you know, so. Uh, and at least in English class, you're supposed to have a creative spin on everything. But see, people seem to want to apply that to everything else. Oh, yeah. Like with, a, with if you believe in death of the author and that, oh, well, any interpretation I come up with is equally valid. Uh, and then you convert that to history or science. It's probably not going to be as successful for you oh definitely yeah so you have to just like say hey i'm biased but at the same time be transparent like this is where i'm getting my information uh this is how i'm interpreting this information maybe you interpret it differently here are my sources here's why these sources are better than these sources and that's actually the most important thing is like having the viewer like think like a historian is uh that will Get them to truly understand what I'm talking. Because a lot of my videos are just introductions to stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Speaking of videos, Mr. Beat, I've always been in the back of my mind thinking, what what collab video could Mr. Beat and I do? And you live in Kansas. I live in Iowa. We have the Iowa caucus for the next election coming up. Is there anything there? Could, could we go uh, mm. maybe like the Daily Show style, go to one of these events and oh. interview people or something? That'd be great. I, uh, yeah, we should team up, definitely. Mm-hmm. I actually went up there with JJ McCullough uh, in, in 2020. This is right before the pandemic. We went up to Des Moines mm-hmm. and uh, we saw a few of the, the candidates. Uh, of course, that was the Democratic side. This time it's going to be Republicans, right? So that's exciting. Yep. I just remembered the first Mr. Beat video I saw because I live in the city of Ames, Iowa, and you have a video reviewing that city specifically. I mean, it's not you, but it's part of your video. I yeah. think that's the one I saw. Shout out to the uh, to Xander who uh, also, uh, well, he doesn't live in Ames anymore, but he, uh, yeah, he went to Iowa State, and he, him and I were just talking because we met uh, and at one of these conferences, you know. He has a, a, a psychology channel. Psychology is his uh, specialty. But uh, he's like, yeah, we, we should compare these obscure college towns in the Midwest. And that's my worst performing video of all, <laughs> of all my compared videos. Hey, you like, got yeah, me I'm on board. I'm going to say, that's awesome. I, yeah, I love Ames. Uh, it's, uh, we, we actually were up there as well in 2020. So, yeah, let's uh, plan on it next year. Yeah, well, right? you were, we well, were both in Ames at the same time. Oh my goodness! I I thought I smelled something. Not that far away. <laughs> I'm actually not that far away from you. Yeah. Uh, if I have to, so if that's my introduction video for Mr. Beat, I would say my favorite one, and I, you might agree because I think you posted something to this effect. I really enjoyed your trip on the Oregon Trail, and uh, there is a part of the video where you like had a special rock that you hid somewhere. Uh, did anybody ever go find that? Not that I'm aware of. Well, I'll go do it. I, if it's still there, I'll go get it. It was such a cool idea that uh, Mrs. Beat, uh, she came up with it and uh, she even like painted them and made them look really cool. And uh, we put several of those rocks out and not one of them has been like, as far as I know, like I'm, I'm pretty sure people pick them up, 
it's probably just like some random old dude who has who's never heard mm. of me. So he's just like, what the hell is this? And they're like, well, well I'll just keep it anyway. He know? did not utilize the hashtag Mr. Beat Rocks. <laughs> yeah. Or or it's a five year old who's like who ate it. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know like <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, it's too, it's too bad. It's sad because like I should do that again. Maybe you, I'll put some in uh, Iowa. There we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd be easier for me to go find it. Uh, <laughs> what was that like? Making like an hour long, uh, almost cinematic. Like you're using drone footage and everything. How, as a dad who's on a family vacation, who has to drive the car, keep track of two, uh, I assume below ten year old children. Uh, and a wife, and also in the back of your mind, I'm making a documentary. How do you even have the brain capacity for all of that? It was stressful. It was very stressful, and I, I, I want to apologize now formally to my family for putting them through that, but I think <laughs> they, still, they still probably have nostalgia for it. It's all good. Uh, but yeah, the, for those who don't, who aren't aware, which is most people, because it didn't do very well, another video that didn't do very well that you like, it's funny. Uh, I decided to, uh, I, w- I always wanted to make a big documentary about the Oregon Trail, and I was like, well, it'd be cool just to travel it because there's an auto tour you can do. The roads <clears throat> more or less follow the actual uh, trail. I mean, the actual trail doesn't exist anymore, but it, it kind of gets close, especially when you g- you go off the main highways. And I was like, well, if we make it, uh, we can kind of make it a gimmick by t- turning it into a uh, quote unquote adventure by going in a Tesla, because the idea is that, you know, there's not a lot of charging stations along this trail, and there weren't, especially in Wyoming and Western Nebraska. We had to go way out of our way just to charge, and it, it did lead to like a more suspenseful, entertaining video, I think. Yeah, I might um, accidentally trap my family in the middle of nowhere because <laughs> the yeah, car ran well, out of battery. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that was kind of a cool, and then, yeah, I tied it to the video game that I played when I was a kid. Uh, did you ever play the video game? No, it was way too boring for me. Yeah, that's gonna say like you're a, uh, you're, pri- you're pri- basically a NP, zoomer, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, I think that's another reason why the people are just like, well, this, this seems like a lame game, but it's a, it's a cool like the Oregon Trail is. Uh, there's nothing, in my opinion, nothing more American than the Oregon Trail because it kind of like has everything about our history wrapped into one so yeah it, it was like a two hour long documentary and i i was trying to get it like uh streamed other on other platforms actually because it's like maybe this isn't the right audience because you, mm. you're scrolling on youtube you don't want to watch a two hour video it's i mean like, i do <laughs> i've got nothing else going on i'll watch every two hour video you post that's awesome uh, yeah i'm glad you liked it because it that means a lot because I was kind of bummed for a while mm. after that came out because it didn't do so well. But Well, everybody, yeah. that's my recommendation. If you want to go check out Mr. Beat, that's the, what's where I would start at least. But what would you say? Where should people start with you? Just whatever piques their interest? Yeah, I mean, I do cover a lot, especially American political history, but I try to cover all the, like, uh, I know one, one video that has done well that a lot of people kind of got reeled in was my 9-11 video. Mm. Um, or my Watergate video, like, because uh, <clears throat> there are people that, of course, you know, <laughs> old people like me, we live through that, you know, like we remember it very well. Even Watergate, uh, there's a lot of older folks that like watched my video and they said, yeah, this is something that I, I remember first watching on TV and getting <clears throat> into politics about. And uh, but, but also Watergate ties in very nicely with what's going on politically today with Trump. Um, Bathroom frankly, gate. I mean, frankly, it makes it makes Nixon look a lot better. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he looks a lot better these days. And I actually went to the Nixon uh, Presidential Library in California with some other history YouTubers, and that's what, we kept talking to each other. I was like, you know, he actually did a lot of good things. He, I mean, Nixon wasn't so bad. It's kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. You ever see that Frost Nixon movie? Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, well, Mr. Beat, I don't know if you have any other uh, historical things you want to dive into, but I did let my Discord know that we were going to be doing a podcast, and I said, hey, if you have any questions for this American history expert slash uh, much, much bigger YouTuber than me, let me know. So would you like to dive into some of these questions? Absolutely. Let's do it. Cool. 
And they might be asking about events that I've never heard of that are like secretly super offensive somehow. So just let me know if uh, <laughs> it's something we should not talk about. <laughs> but, uh, it's all good. Let's see. Uh, well, so here's a simple one. Uh, Heart of 115 wants to know, what are your opinions on the state of Oregon and its inhabitants? Uh, Oregon's a great state. <laughs> uh, I know it has a bad re uh, reputation these days. Portland does because of the homelessness crisis there, mm. but uh, it's a beautiful area and they're making progress. I, Oregon's interesting too because like they just decriminalized uh, all drugs and they have very forward-thinking uh, policies there, which we haven't really seen played out yet. So, yeah, I, I have a, fr a friend from high school that lives there. She moved up there. She, <clears throat> uh, she like met somebody online and moved up there, and she loves it. She's uh, I think in Eugene. I was about to say, uh, keep Eugene weird. I the only place in Oregon I want to go to is Eugene because there's this guy named Political Juice who like made a big video reviewing that college town. And, uh, oh wow! Yeah, I I, I used to watch uh, Political Juice. Does he still make stuff? No, no. Oh my! You don't know about this, Mister B. He had a complete mental breakdown. Deleted all of his videos and they, like started uploading like footage of his toilet flushing like once per day for a month. Uh, you know, he lost it and he he completely disavowed all of his political opinions that he shared. And he he's very conservative, I know, right? But uh, he was like a you know a nineteen year old, so he was just spouting off like. I guess like Ben Shapiro talking points or something like that. He's kind of just repeating what other people were saying. And he, he was really embarrassed after going through college and he wanted to delete it all. But uh, somebody- well, he, was in, he was indoctrinated by college. Those professors yeah, forced yeah, them to have new beliefs. Oh, it kidding, okay. Very well could be. But uh, I'm actually planning on making a video about him because somebody sent me the archive of all of his videos so like you, you can't find them anywhere, but I have them. Ah. So I, if you re-upload them, cause he, he will take it down. Cause I re-uploaded this uh, Eugene, Oregon review video and he struck it down even though he quit YouTube. So I might make a video like the life and death of political juice and just like explain what each video was without actually showing the footage. So then there's not much you can do about it. Yeah, cause it's fair use and mm -hmm. you could probably get away with playing a lot of the playing a lot of clips actually and he couldn't take it down you could actually fight him in court so don't uh, be don't be intimidated by that although i understand like he if he's ashamed but hey we all grow i used to be into anti-vax stuff when i was younger mm. i mean i used to be uh very conspiracy minded um I, I grew up in a very fundamentalist household which kind of explains a lot of that you know like that's my family still is very fundamentalist uh <laughs> With their beliefs so yeah I, you know it's all right we all grow up it's mm -hmm. well no no i'm kidding some, some of us, of us do <laughs> yeah <laughs> i shouldn't say yeah uh okay uh Coeth wants to know what is your favorite weird american history story weird okay um there's so many uh i think my go-to that I haven't made a video about that I'm really excited to make a video about is uh, Joseph Smith. That guy was so strange, and he he started a religion, you know. And he was but he was also a con man, uh, and you know some of the best people who who have started religions historically were just really good at you know persuading Wait, people. You're telling <laughs> me the guy who says if you give me money now you can go to heaven later? You think he might be a con man? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. And that he just he found uh, tablets in his backyard just coincidentally. Mm -hmm. And are you uh, a fan of the it, musical? Uh, I've only seen clips of it online. I actually haven't seen the whole thing. Mm. Have you seen the whole thing? I saw an off Broadway when they came to I think the Civic Center in Des Moines. So yeah, and I, I have mean, basically all the songs memorized from the album. I'm a big fan. Oh wow! I have to check out the whole thing. Yeah. It, some of the coolest people I've ever met in my entire life are Mormon. Like, uh, and they always are like really cool about it. Yeah, apparently the Mormon church even like just laughed it off about the, this musical making fun of them too. And they, in the, the pamphlets that you get at the, that they were advertising the Book of Mormon, the book, oh, like right. you've seen the musical, now read the source material. Yeah, it's a good fiction. Yeah, Which, you, you know, it's a weird thing to advertise on when if you know what that happens in that musical, I don't know if I'd want to be associated with it with my church, but you know, that was cool of them to, you know, take it on the chin or whatever. 
Yeah, it's strange. I. Anyway, uh, yeah, I. Joseph Smith's a fascinating character. So if you just like search search uh, him up, you'll find some some weird stuff. Okay, next one. If I can find a good one. Uh, so I, I know your answer to this one, but uh, Mr. Coffee wants to know who was the best president. Yeah, I, I still think George Washington was the best uh, president. You thought I was going to say George B- Bush, didn't you? No. I thought you were going to say uh, Trump. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's a he's a close forty fifth. Um, <laughs> You're uh, not going to give him the fifth spot on Mount Rushmore. <laughs> no. Not a fan of Trump. He, he he might be the worst at this point. We'll see. Wow. Innocent till I mean James Buchanan was pretty bad. You can't to place him below James Buchanan, uh, but still he was he's definitely bottom ten. I won't I won't actually release a video about that though because people will be just like you're just so biased. Mm-hmm. You know. But anyway, best George Washington, and the main reason why is because uh, not necessarily any laws that he passed or anything because he didn't really pass that many laws. But just uh, all the precedents that he set and the fact that he could have been like any other country throughout world history, like, oh, we won. We kicked the imperialists out. Now I'm dictator. Now what I say goes. He was the opposite of that. He's like, no, uh, I haven't figured everything out. I think this constitution is a good thing. We should have limited government. Uh, In fact, he even like thought should we even have a president? Uh, I don't think we should have a president. And yet they're like, dude, we should not only have a president, you should be the president. They wanted to give him like all this power. He turned it down. So he was like the anti-dictator. Gotta love him. Yeah, two terms, all thanks to him, right? Yeah, he, well, until FDR anyway. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, what, was he in there for like, what, 15 years? Uh, He was in there for... uh. 13 and a half ish. Dang, that's uh, because, wild. You know, he died pretty early in his, his fourth term, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, how, okay, hashtag not a furry wants to know how does it feel that many of our greatest scientific advancements were produced by Nazi scientists? And is that even uh, accurate to say? Uh, some of, yeah, some of the, especially in the space race, uh, NASA, if you just, there's a whole wiki about it. Uh, let me see what the wiki's called. Uh, the Nazis' NASA. greatest hits. <laughs> uh, the NASA not not NASA Nazi connection, which is another good band name, I should say. <laughs> Operation Operation Paperclip is what it's called. If you just search that, you'll see uh, examples of these uh, distinguished members of uh, scientists that worked for NASA that were all former Nazis that contributed greatly to the space race. Yeah, definitely. But other than the space race, I'm not too familiar with a whole lot. I mean, the Volkswagen, I guess. Uh, there's a, yeah. Yeah, Slugbug got me punched a few times as a kid. I don't know if they made that one as well. <laughs> Heck yeah. That's yeah. Good old, good old Beetle. So the way you feel about it is that you just acknowledge that they made some things is that that's a good answer? Yeah, that's yeah fair. you don't need to like. I mean, yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know like, what he was expecting from us, but <laughs> it's true. Like, oh no, how dare you point that out? No. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's something I have no idea what he's talking about. Uh, Anuki uh, Anuaki bro uh, wants to know about Hell's Half Acre in Fort Worth. I've never, I've never okay. heard of it, but it's, it's you might be making intriguing. something up. Okay. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts on the future of America from Sir Red Edge? As as a man with two young children, do you have any hope for their future? I think that the problems we see uh, uh, right now generally with, with uh, a lot of this kind of reactionary backlash against progress, specifically transgenderism, I think is one of the most visible parts of that. I think it's going to kind of fade out pretty quickly um, because what we're seeing right now online is mostly people my age and older. So people that are in their 40s, 50s, and 60s primarily who are uh, scared that their world has changed so much. It's not the world they remember growing up in. 
And so uh, they're going online to be very vocal about it. They're even organizing. They're even sometimes going out and protesting. If they don't have a job, you know, they do that. They have time to do that. Um, and we when we hear a lot about them. I don't think their numbers are really as high as we like we think. Although a lot of, I mean, you know, Trump got 70 million votes in 20. Uh, 20 so that's important to the recognize second most votes of anybody ever right <laughs> that's really just because the population's increasing i assume but another misconception about trump supporters are that they're monolith i think a lot of them are actually pretty rational people that are not that extreme um they just kind of like uh i like the economic policies of him better if that's all uh, although although biden is pretty he's pretty pro-business but I, I digress. But anyway, so when we talk about like what, what we're afraid of, like this direction the country's going, and some people are afraid it's going the other direction, like we're all going to be transgender by the year 2040. <laughs> oh, Seriously, there's people that believe that crap. People believe that crap. State enforced uh, homosexuality. You know. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, that's what, they, that's what they think. Or they're going to take that God's going to um, not exist anymore, which was like, well, why would God even care? <laughs> I, <laughs> but anyway, they, so people fear that, but I think ultimately it's just a bunch of people shouting online and I think the internet's social media kind of demonstration that the internet's still in its teenage phase of existence, uh, that there's going to be a point where, you know, if Gen Z folks like you and, your, and younger that are, they grew up with the internet and they just kind of more easily spot BS online and, and they more, they're able to critically think about it more, unlike people that my age and older who uh they didn't grow up with it and so i would i predict in the next 10 20 years we're going to see kind of a lot of that uh, reactionary stuff go away and we're actually going to probably see a lot of progress particularly with uh i think environmental stuff that's where i think the, the biggest progress will come because we're already seeing the effects of climate change and it's like well you can't really deny it anymore <laughs> so i guess we have to do something about it and uh you know, well, it's, I, I'm, I'm not convinced. I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced I, they're going to do anything. I, I think uh, it's only going to keep getting worse. It will get worse before it gets better for sure. Um, but I do stay optimistic. Like you know, my daughters are 11 and 8, uh, and they will see probably. I would say by the time they're my age, I think I can be tremendously hopeful because. But that's just how history is, you know. It's it's never uh, it's always two steps forward, one step back. Sometimes it's two steps back, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so they want to go three steps back right now, like Clarence Thomas. <laughs> in he went, Let's go three steps back. But, uh, yeah, what was yeah. the deal with him? He was something, some shady money or something. Yeah, yeah, and I well, but he he also is just really conservative anyway. But uh, he wants to overthrow like the Supreme Court decision that legalized birth control. He wants to overthrow uh, the interracial marriage Supreme Court decision. What? Yeah. Wait, what does that mean? Can you break that? He, he legitimately uh, doesn't want different races to be able to get married? Well, no, no, no. He personally is okay with it. Obviously, his his wife is white, for example. Um, but he, uh, I guess that shouldn't surprise you. You'll find that a lot of black conservatives have white spouses, actually. Oh, I did not know um, that. Uh, yeah. Um, but anyway, like... Uh, his whole idea, it, his whole belief system, which is, you know, it has merit, you know, he's a smart guy. Um, but a lot of those decisions in the 60s, um, he believes the Supreme Court overstepped their bounds, that they were doing too much, that it should be up to Congress to make these laws. Congress should have made a law banning, uh, you know, or Congress should have made a law that said it was OK for you to marry people of different skin colors. Uh, and Congress should have made a law that so he's basically that's his argument but you know i i just think it's a little bit extreme because supreme court really has been responsible for a lot of progress in our country and i think we sh should respect that because they sh well it's uh, one of the three branches if my memory serves like <laughs> why would they not have the authority to make laws and stuff well they interpret the laws uh yeah but yeah I mean, the thing is, you can interpret the Constitution in a lot of different ways, especially the 14th Amendment. You can in interpret that very broadly mm -hmm. if you really wanted to. You could essentially, like, uh, say that universal health care is protected under the 14th Amendment, for example, if they were to pass that. <clears throat> so, uh, 
Anyway, and that's another thing I think we're going to have. I think we'll have universal health care by the year 2040. That's what I predict. Oh, I hope so, because I can't afford yeah. this health care now. <laughs> it's yeah, a little too yeah. much for me. Right, that's we why I stay that. home all day. <laughs> can't get in a car wreck. We spend about $16,000 a year just on premiums. Each oh, year. my God. Family, yeah. Oof. Okay, what do we have next? Um, which uh, Mako Horror Show wants to know what presidents have made the most profound positive impact on America's history? I am a fan of Teddy Roosevelt myself. That's a good one. Yeah, I would say Teddy Roosevelt's up there because, like, he kind of uh, he changed the really how we how we perceive the role of government overall, which paved the way for Franklin Roosevelt's policies as well. Uh, which I always shout out Social Security. That's such a huge thing um, that we should never take for granted. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Franklin Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, I already mentioned George Washington. Thomas Jefferson, he was uh, obviously like kind of a rotten person, didn't actually do what he preached, but what he preached was actually pretty forward thinking. When you say so rotten, is that just slavery or did, are there other things that I don't know about? Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, uh, it's pretty clear now at this point that he had an affair with his 13-year-old slave. Oh, what? <laughs> I didn't <Yeah>. know that. <laughs> well, when I say affair, his wife had died, so it wasn't even that. It was like, he groomed her. Yeah. And hmm. anyway, so that, that, and then he had kids that, and then who also became slaves. So that's pretty, like, when I found that out, and for years I denied it. Then I, I kind of I researched it a bit more recently, and like, yeah, it's pre that probably happened. <laughs> but I mean, his uh, his uh, if you read his words, like his rhetoric was really powerful. That really, I think, put our country in the right direction. Uh, even Andrew Jackson, like, uh, because like people forget before Andrew Jackson, it was all aristocrats that were in charge. Andrew Jackson paved the way for like ordinary people to enter politics. You know. Plus, he got rid of all those Native Americans. That was pretty helpful. They were in the way. <laughs> There's too many of them. <laughs> I'm surprised we haven't said Lincoln one time on this podcast. Oh, I always talk trash about Lincoln. Gosh dang, Lincoln obviously is probably the most important because he kept us together. He kept us as Why do you talk group. trash about him? Uh, I think I'm also just being contrarian. He isn't my favorite. He's a, he's definitely top 10, but I, I just think uh, I never got over like what I learned about him uh being a bit too authoritarian, authoritarian like during the Civil War, like uh, suspending habeas corpus uh, and uh, put imprisoning whistleblowers, uh, and also his treatment of Native Americans was pretty bad as well. Um, that's usually what I bring up when I mm -hmm. talk trash about him. <laughs> that's a good perspective. I I almost never hear people uh, bring up the negative sides of Lincoln, uh, and I actually did not watch that movie. Is that one worth watching? The oh, Li it's Lincoln. It's one of my favorite movies. Oh, uh, really? I mean, Daniel Day Lewis is one of my favorite actors, so that's why too. But yeah. So better than Phantom Thread, hopefully. What a snooze fest! Oh man, never saw that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's there's five great presidents for you, Mako. Yeah. Uh, mm, I think I should probably. Skip the Mr. Beast questions because even I don't find that funny, and I imagine you're sick to death of that shit. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, well, uh, Leaf wants to know what is one or some things that you would change in American history if you could. So if you you have the Flash's power, you can run back in time to destroy the timeline. Uh, where did we go wrong? What needs to be fixed? Uh, you know, I think maybe if we were somehow not able to uh, create nuclear weapons, that would be but you know, it probably would have happened if it didn't happen in 1945 it would have happened later if there was a way to prevent us from ever discovering that. At the same time, it's also like led to mutually assured destruction that whole principle that like hey, if everybody, ha all the superpowers have them, they're less likely to use them because they know it's like the end for all of us. So I, I kind of am conflicted on that as well but it's scary because there are, I don't mean to scare people too much but there are nuclear weapons out there that are unaccounted for uh, in Russia um, some that are small enough to fit in a backpack oh. um, and so we you know who knows where they're at and 
that's what kind of that's one thing that kind of keeps me up at night that they're out there you know the, these bad time to be in ukraine <laughs> i'm just waiting for the day like one accidentally goes off because no one's gonna do it on purpose i don't think i just think mm-hmm. it would be like what if there's an accident and then the fingers start pointing you know and then it's what, what uh mads or whatever mutually assured destruction just everybody's gonna start hitting the nuke button at that point I don't know. I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> uh, Willie the Warden wants to know, what country should America watch out for now and had the most impact in history? Hmm. Is there is a country... I, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's all one I... sentence. Is there a country we should be watching out for? You know, who should we be afraid of? China? Yeah, Russia? China. Not Russia. I mean, Russia... If they had more power, people forget how weak of country of a country Russia is. I mean, they can't even defeat Ukraine. For, like, <laughs> yeah. they, that's pretty pathetic. <laughs> yes. um, and they, their population is declining. Their GDP uh, has been shrinking more than it's been growing. Uh, they're screwed. Um, that's why I think Putin's so desperate, which I guess is problematic because you got to worry about how he acts because of the desperation. But China has the power. And they also have been investing more military and infrastructure like um, around the world even, uh, just like the United States used to during the Cold War. And then, yeah, the other part of the question, I don't know, what, he, what did he ask? Like, uh, I guess which yeah. country had the most Im- Im- impact in history? Oh. Probably the United Kingdom? I mean, yeah, the British Empire kind of. I mean, we all speak English. That's yeah. your evidence. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, English is the number one language in the world. Mandarin is... Uh, close there, but guess what language they all still know in China? It's English. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see if there's... Oh, there's a question I wanted to ask. Uh, we had a big, angry debate about this on this podcast a few months ago, and I want you to settle it. Uh, what... I don't know how to phrase it. I guess I'll, I'll say, what would be a better use of resources? Donating one tank to the front lines in Ukraine to help fight the Russians, or curing the blindness of 1,000 people? Well, me being Mr. Beast, I have the authority to answer this. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> I would say curing the blindness, I don't know. Thank you! Thank okay. you! <laughs> so, we... It got pretty heated. I was pretty upset that... Uh, my buddy Florian valued one tank, one single solitary tank, over enriching the lives of a thousand people. But I'm what glad I'm not there, insane here. What was the rationale? He hates Putin. I mean, he lives in Austria, so it's a, I guess it's a little closer to home for him. But still, come on, man. <laughs> one tank <laughs> is not going to win the war. Yeah. But it is what it is. <laughs> Uh, are you familiar with a documentarian by the name of Tariq Nasheed? Uh, there's a t- Tariq that I know who is, uh, I think, Hikma History. Uh, definitely, definitely probably not him unless he makes uh, mm, propaganda that is anti-homosexuality. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That's the same okay, guy. No. Probably not him. Uh, Because somebody wants to know if you are familiar with the documentary uh, Buck Breaking and if it is historically accurate. Maybe I should should react. So it's a movie I reviewed on this channel, and it's it's clearly propaganda that's anti-gay. This guy Tariq Nasheed thinks that there is some sort of conspiracy to feminize black men in the culture and make them, I guess, just brainwash black men into being gay. And he brings up a bunch of what I assume is pseudo history but maybe it is true maybe that's what the question is of uh the slave owners would just treat their male slaves as women and and have sex with them and stuff like that um and that wow. that has carried on through the ages do you, do you think this is all just nonsense probably i mean it, it doesn't pass the sniff test yeah. uh it, it's, I, I have seen it. I own the documentary uh, on DVD. Somebody sent it to me in the mail. So if you want to check oh. it out, I can get you a copy. 
Okay, yeah, I was going to say, I don't want to pay for it. No, definitely don't pay for it. (laughs) Maybe I can react to it. It, It's basically just hate speech for an hour and a half, but... uh, See, it's like, what what motivates someone to to make something like uh, that? Tariq Nasheed has a huge following with this stuff. He's all over Twitter if you want to go check him out, but, like, it's a whole cult behind this idea. Wow. Yeah, It's, it's much bigger than you would think. Okay, I'll check it out. Uh, here's a strange question from Riley. Uh, what is the funniest war that America has participated in? Have any wars been funny? Like the Emu War? Oh, I, you know, I don't know much about the Emu, emu War other than the uh, oversimplified video. The Emu's yeah. one, I think. <laughs> yeah, but that was, a, that was Australia, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was... Um, you know, there was uh, there were wars that happened where um, essentially they called it a war, but not really anybody died or anything, uh, or maybe one person died. The, the Toledo War comes to mind. It was the the border dispute between Michigan and Ohio. Oh. And, uh, it, it's like to this day, that, like people there, people in Ohio and Michigan kind of hate each other. It's a big rivalry. Wow. And it goes back to this war, which if you actually look at the war, not much happened at all, but they just make a big deal out of it. It was the border, the Toledo Strip, which is where Toledo was. They fought over Toledo, basically. I'm just like, who wants Toledo? You know? (laughs) (laughs) That's a fun thing to fight over. I think that satisfies the question. All right. Mm, and we don't have to go all day. We've been going over an hour. I don't know how much time you wanted to set out for this podcast. I don't want to keep you, but we can, I have more questions if you want to keep going. We could take a couple more or so, yeah. Sure, okay. Yeah, I don't want to <laughs> waste too much of Mr. Beat's time with this nonsense. <laughs> for example, Mecca Sandwich wants to know uh, which president would win in a 46-man battle royale wrestling match. Ooh. Teddy Roosevelt? Yeah, Teddy Roosevelt probably, although... He wasn't as big as some of the other ones, like Taft. I think. We, well, who's, yeah. who's taking him down? <laughs> Taft, though, like he lost a bunch of weight. He started getting into shape uh, later in life. Mm. Depends on when when in their life too, but maybe like when they're president, maybe yeah. to uh, Andrew Jackson would probably have a good shot. I mean, a- Abraham Lincoln too was pretty. Uh, really, these guys were ripped. Oh, I mean, yeah, just, he was a wrestler. That's right. Yeah, like uh, Gerald Ford, perhaps. He was a football player. Um, uh, Donald Trump's doctor said he's in perfect physical health, so maybe he'll win. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. He's in, uh, he's like the perfect human. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I, I forgot about – how could I forget about the, him? Yeah. <laughs> and let's see if there's even one worth finishing off with. Hmm. I'm just going to ask you my own question. What are your thoughts on Lieutenant Columbo? Oh, the show? Mm-hmm. Oh, I loved that show as a kid. It's one of yeah, my favorites like, right now. Just one more thing. That's right, yes. I actually, I actually put a clip of him in a, a video. Um, it's like, yeah, like, he's he also uh, just had a way about, like, the way he, he was able to... Maybe it's like that. Who's the actor that played him? I forgot. Uh, Peter Falk. Peter Falk. He's just a good actor too. Mm -hmm. Because he was in other things. Yeah, that's a great show. It's a. Can you even find it anywhere? I'm I'm sure it's on one of those those uh, like free apps on smart TV. Yeah, on uh, Amazon Prime they have this thing called Freevee, and you can watch like seven of the seasons. But now I'm having to illegally watch like the final three because like they took like an 11 year break, and then I assume it aired on some other network. And that's why Amazon doesn't have the rights, or I don't know. But uh, I've, I've got like nine episodes left, and then my Columbo binge will be completed. Every episode's yeah. like an hour and a half long, so it's a real commitment to sit down and watch. Ah, that's cool. Yeah, he, it was an underrated show for sure. It was so satisfying when he would just like bust him, like, because you didn't know that he was going to, like, oh, this is it. He's going to get busted now. Because he. It would always end it like, oh, did he actually have enough evidence to actually arrest him? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's a, I mean, I, I'm obsessed. I, that's all I can say. I think we're mm-hmm. doing a, a 48 hour, a, a short, what is it called? The 48 hour film contest where you have to make a short film in, in two days. And uh, I'm thinking I, I might just play the character of Columbo in that short film. You know, I he's like just living rent free in my head at this point. And I think I could pull it off if I really... Uh, dedicated to it. But Mr. Beat, 
Wow, we've gone on. It feels like we've been talking 10 minutes, but it's been an hour and 10 minutes. Uh, will I be able to get you on this show again someday? Oh, absolutely. Anytime. Just let me know when. Do you want to... We do a lot of movie reviews. Uh, so if there's ever a movie you want to talk about, you know, you have an open invitation. But should we do a historical review of the Buck Breaking documentary? Uh, we could do that. Yeah, Maybe that's I, a good good one to start with. Yeah, I I'm pretty sure that is my most viewed uh, episode of Is It Kino is the buck breaking one. So, you know, maybe a follow up with an actual historian is in order, and then we can get some of my other friends on there who haven't had the chance to see it. It's a good idea. Yeah. That'd be pretty hype. I think pe- when people hear this, they're gonna get excited when they hear Mumkey and Mr. Beat reviewing buck breaking. I mean, it's gonna break the internet. I'll be yes. sure to get you the copy I have uh, digitally somehow pretty soon. Okay. Google Drive that to you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I want to waste my space for that, but yeah, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm down. I'm down for that. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, Mr. Beat, you know, do you have anything you want to plug? I mean, we've been talking about your channel the whole time, but uh, let's do like an official plug here at the end. Uh, yeah, I got the I am Mr. Beat dot com. <laughs> I just actually have I have a new book. I just oh, that's uh, right. Actually, it just came out today when we we're recording this uh, about the Supreme Court. So and that's your second book, right? Yeah, yeah. My other book's about presidential elections. I did every presidential election in American history, and this has like a hundred of the most important uh, Supreme Court cases. Plus, just a it's kind of like a guidebook to somebody who's not familiar with the Supreme Court at all. Um, you know. So I'll have a I link mean, to your channel and to that book in the description below. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I might actually, uh, I'm gonna have to pick up a copy. I haven't gotten your other book yet either. Oh, boy, you don't have to, but yeah, I, I have to shoot you some free If copies. I recall, well, I don't need free copies, but uh, if I recall, the first book is kind of, is it mostly a copy and paste of the videos covering the elections? Yeah, I adapted it. People were like okay. upset, like, well, it's just like your videos. Like, well, but I mean, you know, like you have to change some things, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's, but this Who new knows one if is YouTube will be around. True, Who knows if, true. Yeah. But the the new book is like uh, just all brand new content, pretty much. It's just original. Yeah. Cool. It took me a year to write, so it's like, man, it's like felt like I was back in college. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mr. Beat, thank you again for coming on. Uh, I am beyond excited for whatever we're going to do next, especially if we're going to go harass people at the uh, (laughs) Iowa caucus or review buck breaking or whatever we're going to do. I'll give you the last word. Thanks for having me on. Um, And yeah, let's do it again sometime.